Good morning, this is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel. I want to welcome all the new subscribers and all the old subscribers and, and uh, all the great feedback. Uh, please uh, make sure to subscribe and leave your comment below and say hello. Uh, the hydroponic floating raft test is going good. However, I found starting um, spinach has been kind of a problem. So I heard of a technique on uh, YouTube where you can uh, take your seed, uh, take two cups of water and about a tablespoon of uh, peroxide and uh, soak your paper towel and cover it and in about two days when they start cracking open then move them to a Rockwell cube. So I'm going to try that because I've not had really good success of getting spinach germinated so anyway everything else is doing really good lots of tomato starters uh get some uh iceberg lettuce i did take one of these into the greenhouse early to see how well it survives so we're going to go out there and check it looks like we're going to have a pretty nice day kind of cloudy little blue sky uh looks looks pretty good the towers are be becoming a little bit greener so that's kind of cool um, a lot of our new starters from about a week and a half ago are really starting to pop these are all brand new and uh, that's wonderful so yeah looking good and so uh, yeah this thing ought to be flourishing pretty soon and lots of strawberries what am I going to do with all the strawberries? We're going to freeze dry them, and uh, or just freeze them. They uh, are so nice to have around. All right, so we made it into the greenhouse. Uh, cucumbers are looking healthy, and they're growing. Uh, got a couple of new broccoli started over here. These seem fine, but this was the guy I was watching out for right here. Um, he's pretty young. I was kind of curious to see if, how well they do uh, out here. So, so far so good. So it looks like I can get those other starters out here earlier. So that's pretty cool. Uh, broccoli over here is looking good. This little guy that got broken still held, holding on. So hopefully he'll make it. And then I've also got tomatoes all the way up to here now. Everything's looking pretty good so far. Um... Yep, so far so good. When I come out here, some of the things I look out, look for is check the tank, make sure I'm not, I don't have any leaks. Look at the floor, make sure I don't have any leaks. And check the potatoes. Look how big those are getting. Holy moly. So I'll be adding dirt to those this weekend. So, wow. Those grew like a lot in one day. So yeah, very happy with the greenhouse so far. All right, so those things checked out really good. I did want to let you know on Wednesday, uh, we are firing up a She Said, He Said uh, radio show again. And uh, uh, changed the theme a little bit where it's just not love and romance. It's actually all kinds of subjects, but getting the uh, opinions of both male and female to... Uh, uh, get your ideas on the world. <laughs> so, should be a fun show. This is episode 41. We've done a lot of episodes. So tomorrow at 6 p.m. Pacific time, uh, catch us on, uh, it'll be on this channel, also on Cutting Edge Radio Network's YouTube channel. And, uh, of course, you can know uh, all of our shows play on Good Talk Radio. And so, yeah, check it out. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it. And if not, or if you have any opinions about it, please leave comments below and let us know what we could do to improve the show. So, all right, let's move on. One of the things that uh, we've done with this chicken pen in the past is one is we have cameras in it. And two is we have outdoor motion lights like this one. And we have one inside and we have some on the outside over here too. And basically it's to light up this whole cage uh, when predators or people are near it at nighttime. Well, we're going to do the same thing with the greenhouse. So my lights have come in. I've got to pick them up. Um, 
they're going to be motion detector solar lights and I also have two new cameras coming in so uh, we'll be able to uh, uh, monitor the inside and the outside of this area uh, with our security system so we're kind of excited to get those in and uh, uh, kind of um, make sure that we're watching this. What I worry most about my greenhouse is a critter getting inside and uh, uh, they can do a lot of damage. Mice and field rats are ones that uh, I haven't seen any in here yet but uh, I do know they like to nibble on broccoli. I had a lot of trouble with broccoli in Arizona so hopefully I'll do better here. So. We'll see, but we'll get those installed in the next day or so. Another thing coming up on the homestead here is uh, one thing I dread sometimes is we have a very large area of grass. And so this is kind of a funny time of year where um, we fertilized it, which you saw me do, and we did weed and feed, and we turned on the water system, and we are greening up big time, you can see. And of course we got dandelions which hopefully the weed and feed will help thin out but it's kind of funny because it gets really thick in spots and to get it balanced out uh, we kind of wait till that first we're not ready quite ready for that first mow but I think this weekend we may actually have to hit some of the the lawns <clears throat> and you know what happens when you start mowing it it starts growing but everything's thickening up really well some of the little spots are filling in and uh, it's getting very green but it'll even get more lush uh, as time goes on and uh, sometimes I don't know whether I should fertilize it some more or do more weed and feed or just leave it alone but every year it comes out thick and lush but during the winter it always looks pretty scraggly but uh, some of my other grass uh, it's starting to turn a little bit too, but some are a little bit slower at turning green. But uh, it's definitely changing. And uh, we may not hit these other fields here uh, with the mower uh, for another week after this. some of these. The ones at the house are the ones that thing, seem to thicken up faster. And I'm not sure if it's because some of it gets more shade or what. And the other thing we got to get done is I've got to get that above ground garden done and add, put these additives in. I've got my wagon up here, but uh, finding time to get things done and getting all of our internet stuff done too is sometimes challenging. All right, guys. So I'm in the RV. Kind of hard to see, I know. Um, one thing I had to do is we had a guest in here. I had to shut down the refrigerator. One of the things that's always important to do is to open up your refrigerator so you don't have mold. The other good news is uh, I know I've been I've had a mouse terrorizing us, and it looks like I caught me a mouse down there. So uh, I'm still fighting the mi mice battle, but I'm glad I caught him, and uh, we'll pull that out in a minute and uh, keep monitoring and get to make sure I don't have any more mice. And because uh, they sure can cause havoc in an RV. One more thing I was going to tell you is, you know, we have the mouse bucket system here to catch our mice. He's like, how do you get them out of there? <laughs> Ranger Rob poopy bags. <laughs> That's what I do. So uh, uh, I just put my hand in this thing, grab the mouse, turn it inside out. I don't have to touch him and uh, throw them away and uh, keep the bucket running. So it's really easy. And Ranger Rob poopy bags come in handy for a lot of things. Oh, now that I got my shameless plug in and I got my mouse, uh, all's good. And we'll keep them monitoring the RV, making sure that we keep it clean and keep it safe and uh, keep the critters out. I find it kind of interesting. I monitor a couple of uh, YouTube channels that uh, I'll look at Montana land, Idaho land, and those areas up there, only because I I just love the area, but I'm not planning on I'm moving. Uh, however, what's interesting is uh, listening to the stories of the realtors saying that because 
Oh, I guess people like us and the whole works kind of telling people to get out of the cities. Uh, you know, as soon as land comes up uh, available or houses in Montana at least, uh, it's a bidding war. And so uh, uh, <laughs> the point is um, you're going to have to be on your, if you're going to buy or try to find land or a homestead or something in between, uh, you're going to have to be aggressive and smart. Uh, one of the things he was saying is uh, have your decks in a row. Do not do a contingency. Otherwise, um, you'll never uh, you'll never beat the cash offers. So they suggest if you really truly want to get into a region you want is to sell your house, move to the area you want to live in, whether you have to use a trailer or a rental. And they said even rentals are hard to find. <coughs> and uh, have your financing ready to go and be patient and aggressive. And you're probably going to end up paying more than you expected for the lands because you'll get into bidding wars. There is exceptions to that. Um, so anyway, be aware of that. Uh, it's kind of sad, but you know, do you blame the city folks trying to get out of get out and, and they're realizing they can work virtual now? So uh, the world's changing. People are leaving the cities. And uh, that's a good thing because the cities tend to cause our a lot of folks to be like lemmings and follow whatever's going on. And they're realizing they don't want to be followers anymore. They want to be independent and self-sufficient. And that's a good thing. The only thing we worry about is bringing some of those old those beliefs from the city into the countryside. And we don't want any part of that. So you're not invited here. <laughs> If you're bringing your city ideas uh, out of here, we want community, we want patriotism, we want people to believe in the United States, and uh, we want people to uh, let, believe in less government and freedom. And so uh, come on out if you want a piece of that pie. But if you uh, are not a team player or not a community person, um, you're not going to be welcomed out here in the country. You, it's going to be frustrating for you and frustrating for your uh, neighbors. Uh, where they're, You'll find that people out here are immediately friendly. But uh, if you come out with liberal ideas and, and uh, government control and, and telling people what they should be doing, uh, that doesn't go over well out here. So food for thought. One of the other things I wanted to do is talk about my German Shepherd. This is Belle. Belle. And uh, what I want to uh, point out to you guys is if you ever get a German Shepherd, it's all about the ears. These little ears here. Um, Belle. Belle, show me your ears. Is uh, maintaining them. So if you're going to have a German Shepherd or a dog that has their ears up like this, especially in the country, uh, we constantly have to clean them because uh, uh, they're just like little dirt machines and uh, she's always got itchy ears and uh, uh, so every week we actually clean her ears um, and we also have to be careful of what's called cheat grass and so cheat grass if they get into their ears uh, sometimes have to be surgically removed so uh, Belle is uh, a sweetheart but man, is their ears a pain in the butt. Compared to Cinder, uh, we never have ear problems with her. But uh, Bell Boy, I tell you, having uh, pointy ears <laughs> is a pain in the butt when you have a German Shepherd. But uh, it's worth it, but it's definitely more care. And the other thing we find with her is they have really long toenails. So we have to clip her toenails a lot more than we do Cinder. So just. A heads up if you decide to get a German Shepherd or a dog that has ears that are up. Um, be prepared that you're going to have to maintain them. One more little update I was going to give you is on the pond here. I don't know if you can see it. But uh, our lily pads are starting to come come up. And it'll be really pretty when they all start laying out. <laughs> they was getting frogs. Um, I'm not sure if I told you, but I did identify the second fish. 
So both of my fish are doing great. That one was hiding really well all, all winter. But uh, we've been kind of clean, you know, getting this pond cleaned out a little bit more. Uh, this uh, pump that runs all this is uh, definitely weak. And so we're just going to try to get as much mileage out of the pump as possible and uh, get that replaced and continue kind of cleaning this out. But I don't know if I've ever told you, but this pump, this pond really leaks bad and so uh, uh, it's because of these trees over here the roots have come against the wall and penetrated the sides and what we need to do is drain this thing out clean it out and uh, reline it which is not going to be fun so that's probably a summer project coming up but uh, that little float over here in the back is what keeps our pond full and uh, Lord knows how much water I, I run, but we, we have our own well, so no big deal. But the one thing I can say is, because the water's rotating so much, the dogs drink out of the pond a lot. I, I don't have to worry about them uh, getting sick from the water or anything, because it's uh, constantly being replenished with fresh water. So um, I'm sure to fish like that. And of course, with spring here, you can see all the trees are starting to fill out again. The aspen are getting their leaves now and uh, it's starting to look real pretty here. It'll thicken up really well. And uh, here's another, <laughs> I don't know if I ever showed you this aspen, well I have, but last year I showed you this aspen that Sherry's father planted in a bucket. And throughout the years it uh, broke through the bucket and is both of them here and is a permanent fixture to these trees. Uh, I, I could probably peel those buckets back, but it's kind of interesting. <laughs> but yeah. What can I say? Anyways, um, I'm, I have no plans of changing it, but uh, yeah, aspens are not good to have around your house, by the way. Their root system are atrocious. So anyway, guys, spring on the way, everything's starting to pop. Um, Another thing I was going to show you here, these are, uh, there goes a little lizard. Uh, this is uh, an olive tree. I had to think about that for a minute. And these olive trees, I think I've told you, have big spikes on them. Um, like here, big old spikes. And that's, uh, you don't want to get poked by those things. They are not good. But this is the same um, tree olive tree that was uh, the crown of Jesus was made out of and so it's kind of cool to have I don't know if it's cool but it's kind of interesting to have a piece of history um, of uh, something so terrible you know, beautiful yet terrible these spikes uh, uh, I got one stabbed in my hand once and I got up what they call a thorn and arthritis from it um, but anyway that is the actual tree or type of tree that the Jesus' crown was made out of. And it's kind of an honor to have on the property. But, and it's also a good reminder. So guys, I'm going to end the video here. Um, I've got to go to the post office to pick up the new solar lights that came in. For some reason, I went to the post office. And uh, i got to pick up some... Uh, we're going to attempt to freeze-dry milk this week. So I'm going to pick up a gallon of 2% milk and uh, use it for it ex experimenting with. Um, it would be really nice to have more, as I was telling you in the video before, to have more milk on hand in powder form. And uh, I think also we're going to start putting more emphasis on buying more hamburger. Um, try to rotate it because uh, it's the most versatile and cost effective to have on hand in case meat gets a little hard to get. Um, I am considering uh, meat birds. I don't know if I'm going to do that this year or not. I've got a lot of things going on, but um, they say chicken's going to get, there will be a shortage, which means it'll be really expensive. And does it make sense to grow my own? I don't know. And uh, am I up for it? Uh, yes, I can butcher things. I have no problem with that. Uh, a little, a little, uh, out of practice 
But I used to raise my own turkeys and I, and I definitely know how to clean out birds and stuff. But to do 25 or 50 at a time, uh, I probably have to spend a little money on some better equipment. And uh, I got to weigh that, but it's going to all depend on the economy and what's going to go on with the food sh situations. They're uh, constantly saying there's going to be a shortage, and I was like, do I believe them or not? That's the that's the hard part for all of us with homesteads is um, we hear these reports. We got to watch the market ourselves and uh, make good decisions and cost-effective uh, decisions. And uh, yeah. Anyway, so guys, I want to thank you very much for watching. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. We appreciate it. You guys are great. And uh, uh, in the comments below, say hello. It really helps us out. Hit the like button. That really helps us out in sharing our videos to folks you might think would be interested in uh, a homestead life. Well, um, yeah, we'd appreciate it. So guys, have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.